good morning everyone so today we will be talking about a very very important uh, important condition that has taken the whole world by storm which is mucor mycosis or the black fungus it is one of the most common complications that are being faced by patients all over the world because of the corona virus so first of all we will talk about each 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 thing of this disease step by step number one thing is what are the risk factors involved in the mucormycosis so the risk factor is of course the corona virus which suppresses your immunity then we have any sort of diseases which cause immunodeficiency it could be congenital many people are born with immunodeficient disease which allows this mucormycosis or the black fungus to grow in your nose and sinuses and then it goes into different systems third is the use of broad spectrum antibiotics which again uh, suppresses and removes the normal flora the normal bacteria over there and that also leads to mucormycosis then there is the chronic kidney disease which also is an important risk factor for this and finally there are miscellaneous conditions like for example patients on transplant or patients who are undergoing a uh, different treatment that involves suppression of their immune system so there are certain preventive measures that we can take uh, to avoid mucormycosis or black fungus from occurring these include some household measures which include keeping your surroundings clear always using a hand sanitizer whenever you are moving around or coming from outside and other uh, sanitary measures that can help avoid you to get an infection in the first place second is the hospital ambience why because in hospital it is very likely that if the hospital conditions are not in mint condition and they are not being properly maintained that can also increase your risk and exposure to infection especially because if you are in the hospital that means that you have already had a disease or infection process that has weakened your body so it's very important that the hospitals are kept clean throughout this condition then there is the oxygen administration it's important that the tube of the patient the oxygen mask that the patient is using is being changed regularly in order to enable uh, the patient to uh, stay infection free and in order to prevent mucor from entering the body systems and finally there are different treatment methods we already discussed before that if you are using too much antibiotics or too many immunosuppressant then necessary for any reason we can avoid them and thus prevent this uh, this disease from occurring now we come to the different presentation there has there can be an early stage and then there can be a later stage in the early stage the patient can present to you with unilateral facial pain swelling and redness over the face the patient can also present to you with anesthesia of the cheek the patient will be unable to feel their cheek then there can be nasal congestion of the patient which can also involve uh, bloody discharge coming out from the nose fever as general sense of malaise in the later stages of the disease as the disease progresses it can lead to face swelling ptosis which is the closure of the eyelids proptosis a diplopia other eye eyeball uh, movements might be affected then there is a chemosis palate might be blackish colored or discolored and then there can be different neurological symptoms as well which can also uh, suggest a cranial involvement due to mucor mycosis or the black fungus now we come to the examination and the treatment part for the mucor mycosis or the black fungus the examination will involve two main steps first is the clinical examination this will involve anterior rhinoscopy where you look carefully at the nose then complete nasal examination followed by a nasal endoscopy where you put a camera in and you look at all the structures that are there in the nasal cavity and the sinuses where this affects the most then there is then you uh, there is also a uh, different uh, eye examinations and other clinical tests of neurological tests that you must do to evaluate the spread or the involvement of the disease so far then you move on to the imaging where you will be going for a ct and an mri both of these are excellent imaging studies which will show the complete disease process where it has spread and from where it needs to be cleared out as well as the nerve involvement that might be there 
then for the treatment you have to go for antifungals why because it's a fungus disease so you have to go for an antifungal there are different types of antifungals available uh, there are certain types which are more uh, dangerous to the kidneys they are more nephrotoxic but they are less costly and then there are certain types which are much more costly but they are much less nephrotoxic but both of them have a, can cause nephrotoxicity in this particular case also the you have to go for surgical debridement or the fez to clear out the disease so that the antifungals can act more effectively